I saw him in his figure. Ralph, get the 32 on. Okay. will assign uh, you know, different acronyms for the, for the levels and stories based on that. Uh, we don't yet have an idea of where. And then it takes routing through uh, the Jefferson Proving Ground restricted area. That's where. Okay. There are five. Marines will exit from 111315 to the left, do a three step drop, meaning they'll take three steps. Objective, uh, even while we're moving through the actual assault, you can provide any kind of updates or any changes in the situation that we may not be aware of. people involved, knock it off three times, right? You're going to treat your casualties, you're going to provide that sit rep up to your command. All right, and then we'll, we'll contact range control and get you out of there. So that's, that's the basic information.
Witty, let's go. Your wrist. Hold your security guard. Go. Go, 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 go. Last call on station, say again, line nine. Stand up. Same thing. Look at your toes. Push down. Follow. Hey, how's the route? We're going. Thank you. Which way are we going? Thank you. Hey. I'm on the uh, the radio with uh, with the uh, the flight crew in uh, one one. So our mission is we're training in preparation for a final exercise to assault on an objective in coordination with a convoy on that objective, secure an LZ, land a bird, assault on the objective, and extract through the LZ. So every day that we're out here training, doing these exercises, especially as MPs, doing these coordinations with other units is something that we've done a lot in the past, especially in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. Convoy operations especially is our bread and butter. It's something that we train to because it's one of our strongest proficiencies and it's what we're most capable in. But attaching and being ready to assault on objectives and everything else that comes along with attaching to other units is extremely important to unit readiness. ITX is a collaboration between a bunch of different units to one mission at the end of the day. Everybody's trying to get the same mission done. And us being able to be versatile and go in and assault on objectives, but also being able to do convoy, but also being able to do perimeter security is extremely important and it's extremely vital in keeping 5811s and RMOS relevant in the Marine Corps. We're the last remaining law enforcement battalion and it's extremely important that we continue to train in all these different aspects of war fighting so that we remain relevant to the Marine Corps. So the training that's going on here, it's a joint exercise between us and the National Guard unit here. Uh, we're conducting some joint operations uh, that's going to include uh, vehicle convoys, as well as an airborne insertion, securing an LZ, um, some uh, securing a high value target, as well as an extraction. As MPs, we're kind of designed to be a supplement to whatever unit we're assigned to, uh, whether that be you know convoy ops or detainee ops, anything like that. All of that kind of falls in our wheelhouse. So doing these joint operations allows us to one, focus on uh, how to integrate properly with other units, even if we might be a little unfamiliar with how they do things. This keeps us fluid, keeps us able to successfully perform our mission. And it also allows for us to sharpen our skills on those essential, on those essential operations of our mission, like vehicle convoys, like LZ securing, like handling detainees, uh, being able to practice all of those things and actually implement them in field exercises like this keeps our guys sharp, keeps them on top of it and makes sure that they're prepared when we do have to go down range and do this stuff for real. So, so for us as reservists, this is just what we would call just a drill weekend. Uh, it's just something that we come out and do. This is this one is four days. Uh, we go out to the field. It's pretty common for us to do. Outside of that, we also have like our annual training, which is a little bit longer. But this is just uh, this is just a normal training exercise for us. It's what we do to stay provisioned as reservists. Being part of the military, we've got multiple branches. We've got you know tens of thousands of, of different people that we work with. Uh, it's important for us to be able to, no matter, no matter who we might have to work with because we don't get to pick, it's important for us to be able to integrate successfully with those people because that could be the difference between a successful mission and a failed mission. So practicing that, even if it's just for a few days out in the field like that is huge because obviously the National Guard is gonna do things differently. They're gonna treat things differently. You might have some different SOPs than us. So being able to kind of learn those and learn how to overcome any of those communication errors and differences we might have in a field environment is just gonna allow us to complete a mission better when we do have to work with other units down the road. Uh, Marines in general typically think of military police uh, behind a patrol car, uh, conducting traffic stops and issuing tickets. Uh, there's a lot more that military police do and with uh, 4th Law Enforcement Battalion being the last remaining law enforcement battalion in the Marine Corps, we're out here conducting uh, field operations, specifically an air assault raid in what would be the rear area battle space uh, of a larger exercise or mission. This weekend we've, we've showed up and we've set all of our, our bivouacs side up. Uh, we've conducted uh, rehearsals for IA drills, immediate action drills. Um, our platoon commanders have done um, the platoon briefs 
the squad leaders have, have done their own orders process. Uh, and then from there, we've moved into uh, platoon and then company size rehearsals. Uh, we also conducted cold load and hot load training uh, with the Kentucky Army National Guard who are providing five uh, UH-60 Blackhawks to transport us for our air assault raid. Uh, we'll be inserted from uh, Frankfurt uh, Army National Guard base to uh, Camp Atterbury up in Indiana. Uh, from there, our Marines will exit the aircraft and do some patrolling. At a certain point, they'll conduct a reconnaissance of a, an objective, an enemy village, uh, where there's being uh, munitions and weapons stored. And finally, that'll conclude with a raid on the village, so Mount Town clearing uh, with a nighttime extract again by the K Kentucky Army National Guard. Uh, this training enables the, the, the Marines, junior uh, and, and senior, and, and even on the officer side, uh, enables them to, to practice a lot of the fundamentals from uh, patrolling, uh, radio communications, how to uh, lo load assault positions, um, how to conduct a land nav. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of just kind of basic operations that uh, this will enable them to practice real, real world. Uh, and then also uh, with the assistance of the Kentucky Army National Guard, we're able to practice uh, those, those helo operations, right? The integration of not only air assets, but also working in the joint environment, since that's kind of the way of the future and where we're all going. Alpha Company with 4th Law Enforcement Battalion, uh, being a military police company, uh, we bring to the fight uh, TSC, uh, so, which is tactical site exploitation. Uh, we bring detainee handling. Um, and then we also bring in the capability of riot control operations. Uh, and then some other very specific skill sets uh, unique to law enforcement, right? Just being able to conduct interviews, knowing how to uh, approach suspects in a lawful manner, um, knowing you know, authorities and jurisdictions, things like that, how to, how to question people, how to preserve evidence, those kinds of things. So that's what all my Marines are trained for. Anyone can go out and search a building, but not everyone can go out, search a building, preserve evidence, uh, and, and secure a scene uh, in, in the proper order, and then also handle and pass off the EPWs in a proper manner. Not everyone can do uh, uh, riot control operations. So, so there's a lot of unique skill sets, but we also have the ability to go out and conduct patrols. We have the ability to go out and set up a defense. We have the ability to go into the, the offensive and con conduct you know, limited types of attacks. We've got uh, convoy assets, we have Humvees, we have highbacks, we have seven tons, and uh, plenty of other firepower that we bring with us organic. Yeah, I think if I could say anything important to the masses, um, it would be that military police are not, uh, we're not there to, to write tickets. We're not there to um, harass the Marines. You know, the, I, the real capability that I think uh, the military police bring to the fight is the tactical side exploitation, is the riot control, is the, the dog handling, right? Um, the uh, um, route regulation, the base defense, right? We do more than just stand post and secure, you know, a, a base, right? We're not just gate guards. So there's, there's a lot that we bring to the fight uh, and there's a lot of things outside of, you know, your, your standard MP mission that we can do, right? Um, we're not infantry, um, but we can do some of the same things. So I, I think that's kind of what I would, what I would, what I would say. And, and, you know, we're looking for opportunities uh, and, and we want to stay in this fight with everyone else.